Hey, what's up? Ron here, and today I'm going to teach you the secret to painting shiny and reflective surfaces. So let's get to it. So here is the reference photo and this one's color, but we will be working from black and white. It's going to make it much easier for us to see the values. I like to have a lot of uh, of the you know things at, at control so it's better this way and of course high quality picture of the drawing stage the sketch stage will be available both for this demo and the next one now notice how I start here from the hood of the engine that and that's quite random what I'm doing is a, a process of in, in this first process we're gonna just work kind of a la prima section by section the next one you'll see it's gonna be a bit of a different process where we work in larger layers that contain more in them but here we're working just from one shape to the, to the other and when I work like this I like to choose an area that is either close to the focal point because then I'm super focused and I know it's gonna turn out well or a big shape and the hood has a big it's just a big dark shape that, that because of the shadow from the tree coming up from above now what is that secret that we talk about when it comes to drawing shiny and reflective surfaces the real secret is to move away from what you think is there or how you think things appear and just paint them as abstract shapes and this is easier said than done but if you follow this process and you you look at what I'm doing here I'm looking at different shapes individual shapes so for example here there's this beautiful shape of dark shadow from here all the way right to the tire there's this tiny gap due to the connections of the pieces uh, that make the body of the car there's this abstract line there it's just a lot of abstract shapes the challenge is how to get an accurate drawing and then how to get the values accurately but when we work black and white the values become much much easier and actually you can start with the just darks you can start with the black and then try and find your footing where when it comes to the mid values you don't really have to start from light to dark you can paint in whichever process works for you now one important thing that I do think about is connections notice how I connected the shadow under the car to a, a new wash that is actually the asphalt for the street the reason I do that is look up above there are so many of these individual shapes now if I paint everything fragmented it's gonna be a big mess and trust me I made this mistake of many times before so I'm very aware of the fact that I have to have some soft edges and the lower section is the perfect area to do that so look at how I merged the tire with that shadow right and the the tire the plate with the shadow with the street very important to balance out everything that goes on up above because it's either unless you do that it's gonna be a big mess and the shadow under the car I'm also putting wet and wet I let it blend I let the tire blend you give up some control uh, in order to balance the painting now you don't have to give up a lot of control if you have good wet and wet skills if you know how to work your way around edges you don't have to give up much and I don't feel I gave up much I feel like I just did it the right amount uh, while still being quite controlled okay um, but I really want you to not worry too much about connections especially when it comes to these abstract shapes on the actual body of the car and all of these shapes that reflect uh, different elements from around it look at how the shape of the body of the car curves and those curves lead the trees and everything else that's reflected in it to curve with them actually in the next process we'll have a great example of this with the ground you'll see the reflection and it's just a very fun process because and by the way I have to apologize here because I just forgot to hit record for a while and then I realized too late so we skipped a few steps but not a lot uh, the concept and the main the main idea here is still the same now for this front grill it's very hard for me to get each and every individual detail right out the gate so I'm actually putting some kind of an even wash over all of it darkening it all and look at what I'm doing here after I put in those darks initially now I'm starting to fill in the gaps the white gaps with mid values because not everything that we have here is white I have to obstruct some of that paper white to put the painting in the right balance right now simultaneously I'm also darkening areas that need to be dark now, look at this beautiful gradual transition from the tire from left all the way to the back to the right look at how and you can see this in the reference photo it gradually changes from a slightly darker to a slightly lighter all of these small kind of touches are important they will compound the more you can get of these right the better the results gonna be now I'm doing something quite different here which is to actually 
uh, sketch and, and paint each and every detail in the grills. I just wanted to get some some of them, you know, to look good. And I couldn't find a way around it, honestly, but to just paint them. Sometimes you just have to paint things and you can't really get around it. But other times, the best idea is to avoid painting each and every detail. And the best idea is to paint, let's say, the entire forest is just one big shape, right? Which is something a lot of people have trouble with. Look at these abstract shapes. Just it's things reflected in the front and I'm just looking for them and I'm trying to find where these are and where I can exploit these wavy lines just to create these beautiful effects. I know a few touches of darkness here and there, darkening this mid-value that wasn't dark enough. Um, you'll notice that if some parts of the painting feel detached, you've probably gone too light or you forgot a mid-value and it's a very common mistake uh, and you've seen it in the last couple of critique videos I did. It's very easy to find the darks, find the lights and miss everything in between. So I don't want you to do that. So when there is a mid-value, like right here from the clouds and the sky reflecting, I want you to get that in. And I'm sorry that you can't see that it's a blue sky because I made it black and white again, but still. Now, the background here is just for support. So I have to be very careful not to go too dark, not to go too detailed, not to go too, too many hard edges. Notice just how many of the edges I'm actually going to blend in just one second. You'll see I'm blending this bottom edge, blending this edge, just coming back with some water, keeping it smooth. The important thing here is the car couple of small touches, pre-wetting the ground. Everything is dry now. I'm pre-wetting because what I'm going to do is put a stronger shadow. I felt like it needed more. So here we go. Boom. One go. Courage. You have to put it in there. You have to uh, get the right value, especially in these instances. You have to go dark enough because you're doing wet and wet. So be fearless in that regard. Go darker than you think, uh, because usually it's the other way around for most people. So uh, definitely something to pay attention to and, and develop that courage. Just once or twice you do that and you'll figure it out and you'll see, oh, okay, so, so far I've been using very light paints where I shouldn't, right? Now look at this hard edge next to the tire. I don't remember. Yes, okay, I am blending it. Lucky me, because I was like, do I leave it that way? Hopefully not, right? Um, now, these are high-level uh, per composition things, so don't feel too bad if you, you have no idea how to choose what to put an emphasis on. To me, the front of the car is the focal point. That's where I want a lot of the attention to be on. So everything that's kind of around that, to the right, to the top, I'm trying to blend. Now, we can't have a complete painting without a few highlights, uh, and it was impossible to paint around these, so I'm coming back with my uh, trusty Signo white gel pen and with some opaque paint, John Brilliant by Shinhan PWC, uh, PWC, PWC, right? Yeah, um, and it's fairly opaque. I'm using the two of them just to bring out some of the highlights uh, that I missed. Uh, putting some dark areas that I missed as well, coming back with some water, moving it around, right? The technique is secondary. What's most important to me is get an accurate drawing, trace from my work if you need to, then get the accurate values in the right place and don't obsess too much about like, is the edge perfect, is the flow perfect? Just focus on right value, right spot. You'll have time to develop the higher level skills of like, how do I actually blend that? Uh, what edge do I actually blend, right? Now the grills didn't pop enough, so of course I'm darkening them a little more. Um, but yeah, you'll have time to figure out the whole composition and high level stuff later on. Uh, I just want you to focus on that, right? The abstract shapes and using the right value. Here is the final result. Uh, pause the video if you want to see it more because it's going to disappear real fast uh, as we move on to the next process. Now here I'm doing a bit of a different approach. And again, a reminder, the sketch stage is available. You just find a link in the description box. You'll find everything, the reference, the sketch stages, uh, whatever you need, right? Uh, this time, Already you can tell I'm using a different approach. Now I'm doing the more traditional light to dark where I'm merging a lot of shapes together. So instead of working in sections, I figure out, okay, what's everything that isn't a paper white? And I paint over that. Um, uh, and and the because we simplify the shape in a way because we merge it all together, which could be looked at simplification, could be looked at a challenge, right? But because we did that, 
we actually have more time to focus on the edges. Um, so, and I'm using a very wet wash, much lighter, so it takes longer to dry and uh, it allows us more time to manipulate the edges. So don't just put the, the shape there. Make, take advantage of the opportunity to have uh, variations in edge quality. So I'm gonna show you in just a few seconds as I finish this wash that I did want to show you in its entirety. So I didn't cut out, I think, almost anything from here. Um, you will see at the end how I'm starting to manipulate the shadows themselves. Now, the, the ground itself is actually quite dark. It's not, I mean, it's not dark, but it's, it's definitely not white. So I'm painting around that. The, the one thing I left kind of white is, again, the top parts of the car and that tire thing that I'm also going to cover some of in just a second. Um, it's going to really... Uh, not matter too much later on there's actually stage is up for interpretation a lot of it is up for interpretation you can change quite a lot of it uh, but it is a good kind of stepping stone for the next step so what i will say more than just following me blindly figure out what you need to get a second wash that's good uh, some of you may not want to blend as much of the edges as i am going to do right now some of you may want to preserve that right maybe you want to go more wet and wet now and start charging with dark paint i didn't do it this time because i wanted to show you a bit of a different process right where where i merge as much as possible uh, but you feel free to do it your way, find a hybrid approach that works, because that's how I do it. I use most frequently a hybrid approach. Um, I'm putting a lot of emphasis maybe on one of them, on one approach in a video, in a given video, just for educational purposes. But honestly, I'm using always a hybrid approach of, you know, one time I'll start from the focal point, work my way out, then I'll do a big even wash where I cover a couple of shapes together because they have the same value, right? So there's a lot of ways of doing this. Now, so this is dry and we can move on to the next wash and I'm really jumping into the darks because the darks are such a prominent big shape. Now, I will cut out some, some parts of this stage because I'm basically filling in the areas okay now when you do that you want to be careful right you want to be and by the way I didn't even talk about a blending technique from earlier just make sure you learn about edge control I have plenty of videos on that so if you have a hard time with it you know you basically come back with water and blend the edge but you know it's, it's a tough one so be sure to check these out if you need more help with that but now that we're in this stage we can just render these dark shapes. Now, I am probably gonna miss the mid values along the way and just focus on the uh, darkest darks, which is fine. Just be aware that you may need to return later on and add a few of these, okay? Uh, so here I am, I see these be this beautiful dark line, just putting it in. Look at all these reflections of trees in the back, uh, back window. Uh, when you paint these, have in mind the shape that they're on, right? It's a curved glass. And then there is this waviness to it because of the dent where the glass meets the body of the car. Have all of these things in mind. It's pretty much the only way to, again, be able to paint this. Think about the shape. Think about the, the curve, the, the material as well. And then just observe the shapes and paint them as closely as you can. And in fact, this is a great exercise for rendering shapes as you see them because we don't have to focus you'll be surprised we don't have to focus that much on the um on the values too you can mess up quite a lot of the values here and it will still look good if you have an accurate drawing we don't have to focus on color because there's no color here right just black and white so you can focus on the shapes and you can even decide uh, consciously to not focus on edges and just work on getting the edges, the, the shapes to be accurate, sorry. So then you don't care about the edges, right? Now, one important thing I did here is look at, again, merging. I merge the car with the shadow underneath it and probably with the entire street. And I'm gonna actually leverage that opportunity to also put some details in the, in the street, like the texture and stuff, like bricks, uh, you will see. Now, look at how I'm going back. I told you I may revisit some mid values. So here we go, some mid values for you completely touching the darks, just completely merged together and letting the paint do what it does. Uh, now, one thing I do want to talk about and a lot of people kind of miss is observe what's going on on paper. F force yourself, if you have to, to just relax and, and just put a line, look at it, and you don't see a lot of it because I cut it out because in the editing of the video, but I'm actually taking some pauses here and there and looking. 
and I'm trying to figure out what shapes look good. What opportunities can I make use of to make this look good? Look at how the shadow merged down there. It's really nice looking. And here I felt like, okay, I need to darken some areas there to the left. So I'm darkening and then softening, but really try and see what happens on paper. So for example, look at the part of the card that's closest to us right under the tail light. There, the paint is still wet, and we can actually do some wet and wet to put in the texture and some reflections in a way that won't make them too uh, sharp edged. And that's a great opportunity to get some details in, and you'll see me doing this in just one second while maintaining uh, a bit of flow and a bit of vagueness even. Uh, and you can not to do these things unless you're very aware of what's going on on paper. So here we go. Look at the look at this. I'm putting this with very thick paint against a paint that is still very wet, starting to dry, but still very wet. And this will really give us a vague look to these reflections, uh, or rather parts of the of the car and or how it or some one of them is a reflection. So yeah. Uh, now as for the background, pretty much the same principles from the previous process. Um, and, and just from the from this first wash, focus on the big shapes. Don't obsess over every leaf that you see there. We have no desire or ability even to put all these details in. I see this time and time again. People who feel like they have to paint every leaf. You don't. Okay, you really don't. It's very counterproductive. Uh, uh, so here I am putting a bit of that street level, just details for the bricks. I actually got this wrong. I put some water in and then I smeared it to make it less, again, more vague, more kind of at the edge of the painting. Uh, I forgot. I thought I'm doing a bit of this wet and wet, but I don't. Uh, actually, a bit, a bit, maybe where the shadow is, it's still a bit wet. And also to the left where I just put water, it's a little wet. But look at this, it's such a nice balance. Uh, I think it looks really, really nice like that. Now I'm pre-wetting because I want to get a smooth edge. The secret is doing what I just did. One time, don't scrub, don't, you know, because you may reawaken the paint. And if you're using terrible paper, don't even attempt this. If you're using pulp paper, it's not going to work. But look at this beautiful soft edge I'm getting to the left there. And that was my purpose, not to get a very hard edge there. And then I'm connecting it with the shadow underneath. Again, this is a smaller shape, so we can afford... Uh, to take more time and really look at the edges and, and the connections, right? Uh, now, what I'm doing here is just like drawing. I'm drawing the details with the brush. So, um, and some people struggle with this too. Practice, practice drawing with a brush. Just look at an object, try and draw it directly with this kind of a small rigor brush and it will improve your skill. Now, look at how I'm observing. I'm trying to figure out, okay, what's the angle? What's the curve on these reflections of bricks? And look at look at how I do this. To the left, it's, it's kind of a one way and then on the right, it's curved completely the other way. Um, and this these are very subtle nuances but they do translate to look at how these lines are curves curved they it does translate to an impression that makes sense for the viewer and these are again very subtle but you will notice them and when you look at the final result you will see that these bricks are reflected on the car which i think is an awesome look i think it looks really really good so once again adding a few of these final highlights final touches I'm going to remove the tape soon um, and kind of add that Thunderbird logo uh, after the fact. So sometimes that happens. Here we go. Removing the tape, final result, and adding the logo. And look at these beautiful combinations of smooth transitions, a few hard edges here and there. The values are on point. It looks good. Here's the scanned result. Um, just a very, very fun process that I urge you to try and challenge yourself, you know, and, and choose something specific to focus on if you're having a hard time. Decide to work just on values or just on shapes or just on whatever, right? Even if you work on colors, focus on those for a while. Don't force yourself to do everything at once. It's very, very hard. But in any case, I want to thank you so, so much for watching. This is going to be the outro. Don't forget to check out the courses in the description box. You have the frustration free watercolor. If you're having a hard time letting go, enjoying the process, you have the watercolor realism course for realism. You have the draw anything course if you struggle with drawing and also the new patreon critiques tier so if you want your work critiqued by me be sure to check that out all the links are in the description box below thank you so so much for giving them a look i really do appreciate it we'll see you again in the next vid real soon